Hi, this is Scott. Welcome back to another Hollinger Team video blog. Uh, this is our year-end recap for 2023 and uh, share the numbers with you on waterfront transactions and um, uh, overall uh, land and home sales in Flathead and Lake Counties. And then at the end, we've got a little bit of um, why I've been telling uh, everybody that asks that this was a weird year and uh, the, the devil's in the details, so we'll, we'll have that at the end. Uh, first off, we start off with Flathead Lake Homes, and um, we had uh, a, quite a decrease in the number of sales of homes on Flathead Lake. It went uh, basically about a 30% drop from 38 homes uh, the year before 2022, compared with last year at 20, uh, uh, 26 transactions. There's 27 actively for sale right now, and uh, so, you know, roughly a one-year supply. Um, but there, there's also some interesting things there. Um, when you look at where the transactions were, 10 of those transactions were in the one to two million dollar price range, but right now there's only two homes for sale in that price range. When you look at uh, um, two to three million, there's six, but there was only two transactions. So you go from basically uh, a five month supply in the uh, in the one to two million to uh, a, a well, a three year supply of homes in the two to three million. And then then when you jump up over three million, you end up with about a two year supply of homes. So um, just, I guess there's the beginning of the weirdness and uh, we'll see how this year uh, develops as far as homes on the market and, uh, and what sells and um, interest rates and all kinds of things that are gonna be factors contributing to this year. On Flathead Lake Condos, uh, a big drop there, 50% drop in the number of transactions, uh, only six for sale right now in, uh, uh, in the, on, around Flathead Lake, and uh, which is, translates to roughly a, a half a year supply. But when we look at the, uh, the actual sales, um, 10 of them were under a million dollars while we have six uh, are uh, four of and four were over a million dollars. Well, if we look at the six that are actively for sale, um, they're all over a million dollars. So it, uh, there's a supply over a million dollars of, of uh, condominiums around the lake, but really the sales are happening under a million dollars right now. On to flathead vacant land. Not much to share there other than half as many transactions as the year before and about uh, one year's worth of vacant land tracks for sale right now. Uh, of course, all of this, those will all kind of pick up as the year starts out and we'll see how what happens with vacant land. Then we look at all the rest of the lakes and um, they all show generally a reduction in the number of transactions compared to the year before other than Echo Lake and uh, Foy's Lake and um, uh, Lake Mary Ronan, that uh, those were the three lakes that actually had more sales in the previous year. Um, and really the only um, body of water that has any um, number of properties for sale is the Swan River. And they have four right now and they had four transactions last year. So um, kind of a, a, on a good pace there. The rest, um, and that's what we're struggling through. Uh, and all of these is the um, the lack of properties for sale has created this these these low numbers uh, in in uh, uh, not to say that there aren't plenty for sale in the upper price ranges but that pace is a lot slower then we go on to um, the full year recap for um, the Flathead Valley Flathead in, La in Lake County and we look at the homes uh, we've got uh, Fair number of homes for sale, especially compared to the number that have sold 1,400 uh, with 500 uh, plus available. So really only about a three month supply. If we look at that compared to the year before, we're down about uh, 10, 15%. Uh, there's a lot of pendings going right now. So there has been some effect. I am positive from in interest rates and uh, uh, we can talk about a little, little bit about that maybe later. Condominium sales off by, shoot, almost 50%. Uh, 
and down about uh, 10, you know, 10% from the year before. Land sales, um, if you look at the number of sold and the number of active, uh, it's about one year supply. So that's, that's um, much more than say like homes where you've got about a third of a year supply and a decrease in the number of um, sales of land up to about, about 15%, 15 plus percent. Um, still a good number of pending, but uh, um, not, not like we've seen in past years for sure. The, um, then we get into some interesting numbers that uh, we wanted to share with you, and that was a list to sale price negotiated um, uh, from the closed transactions, and we did it for homes and condos and land. And you can see the comparison year to year on those where la in 2022, it bumped up against 100% of ask price, and we can see where it's dropped down some with uh, homes and then condos and then land was probably the biggest drop and uh, that really has to do with uh, probably I think uh, what I call seller sellers perceived momentum of the market where the way it was going up and discovered that it uh, really isn't going up like it has and so there were price adjustments made more to where the market was and not really a decline in, in uh, values or anything like that. It's still, uh, it's still a very strong market and uh, limited things for sale. And along with that, we, uh, we have a little graphic about days on market. And uh, you can see an increase in their uh, condos and homes much more than uh, single family residents. But, uh, you know, when it was really going and blowing, we were at, you know, shoot, two weeks on the market or something like that. And now we're, we're up there, you know, in about uh, half, well, closer to a third of a year. But uh, certainly an increase in the days on the market. And then here's where the weirdness kicks in. We look at the median price. And we were talking about the list to uh, sales price ratio before. And in this, we can see actually that uh, on condominiums, we actually saw a little bit of an increase. And on a single family residence, uh, you see about a $20,000 uh, decrease in the median. But frankly, on 600,000, that's really only about 3%. So it's not, hasn't been a huge, huge uh, drop there. The last graphic that we have is the Housing Affordability Index. And uh, that is uh, a graph that uh, reflects, well, the ability for people to buy and how that's been dropping uh, for both single family and condos. Um, and if you look at the years on that, it, it happens to coincide pretty close to when they started uh, raising the interest rates. And obviously if the interest goes up, the affordability goes down. And uh, that's, that, that's what we get until we see a change there. Well, one of the uh, things that I'm wondering about is if uh, the forecasts of some decreases in interest rate this year uh, come true and we actually see a decline, will we see um, some additional hesitation in the market where people are waiting to see if it will go down a little bit more and maybe a little bit more or you know, where it's gonna go there. So. Um, this year probably is going to be a really interesting year too, and I might have to say weird again, just because um, some of the some of the numbers don't match up with uh, some of the others' numbers as far as the direction that things are going. Anyhow, thank you for uh, viewing another Hollinger Team video blog. Please subscribe, pass it on your friends, send in messages with questions or ideas. Happy to reply to all of you.